Tuesday, which means it's time for Teacher Tip Tuesday, because Teacher Tip Wednesday just wouldn't roll off the tongue the same way, I guess. So one of the ideas here behind this sort of series is to like play some of the old videos that I have because I have like something like 300 videos at this point. And so there's stuff that's kind of like gotten lost in the sauce or it was advice in the middle of a very long video. And so I used to do this show called Teacher Tip Live. What do we call it? Teacher Talk Live. She's not even listening to me, the not so secret wife. But anyway, Teacher Talk Live was me and some other teacher that I admired, whether someone from YouTube or someone that I just admired in the world or on Instagram or something along those lines. And one of these times I invited like literally my hero in the teaching world, Rafe Esquith on and he accepted. And I could make Teacher Tip Tuesday videos for the next five, six months off of just this one interview or like show that I did with Rafe Esquith. And I'll, I'll link the whole show. Let's, I'll link the whole thing up here in case you want to watch the whole thing. In one part, I thought as I was watching this the other day, I thought this is so poignant for now because this is the time of year when a lot of teachers are wondering like what they're doing in the classroom. Are they doing it right? Was this year a waste? How do you build engagement in the students at the end of the year? And I asked that question to Rafe, which was, how do you build engagement? How do you build buy-in from kids that don't want to buy in? Here's part of my conversation with Ray Fesquith. I actually train my kids to do this. If you ask a Hobart Shakespearean who's working, why are you doing this? They're going to put down their pencil and they'll look you right in the eye and they'll say, CJ, if I learn this skill, my life will be better. If I learn this skill, my life will be better. Most teachers tell their students, here's what we will do today. Around my 10th year, I figured out every lesson is, here's why we are doing this today. And we are doing it to teach you a skill far beyond today. That's when I figured it out. Now, it didn't mean I was really good yet. It took me another 10 years to figure out how to execute that with every lesson. But whether I'm teaching baseball or we're writing an essay or doing a Shakespeare play, every lesson before we start, the kids and I have a talk, and believe me, the kids do most of the talking. Here's why we're doing this. If you were to ask my kids, why are they doing a Shakespeare play? They wouldn't talk about Shakespeare. They'd say, we're learning about language. If we speak better, we're going to write better. We're going to listen better. We're going to communicate better. And in a million jobs, that's going to make our life better. If we're working on learning how to work as a team, you can't put on a Shakespeare play alone. If you can learn to work with other people, your life is going to be better. So that was the key moment when Ian got me thinking about why, not what, and not worrying about what other people think. Okay. The only thing that matters is what the kids and their parents think. They are the people I serve. That's, that's really, so you just made a lot of first year teachers very sad. I think right there, <laughs> they're thinking uh -oh. 20 years. What are you kidding me? I, I it's, it kind of reminds me of, when I was about, I don't know, my 20s, maybe my early 30s, I'm, I'm 40 now. And I had this idea that by 50, right, like you have it all figured out. Like, oh, I'm, I'm uh -huh. not going to have any more, like, good luck. Any issues. I'll have everything under control. And you're just kind of cruising. You just become, you know, the most interesting man in the world at that point. No. Nope. Um, and the closer I get to 50, I'm like, I have to hurry up. It's like no, no, time's here's, counting down here's, here. Here's, so, the bad, here's the bad news. Because you're getting better, you see more and you want to do yeah. more. So the job actually gets harder, okay? Because, yeah, I mean, if I looked at my class now when I was 25, I think, man, aren't I wonderful? Now I look at my class and go, oh my God, I'm screwing up in so many ways. I got to fix this. I got to fix that. So it never, I mean, you never get to, you know, we have an expression in my class. Uh, I, for your audience who doesn't know this, I'm obsessed with building musicians, great musicians. Yeah. My students are really good. And I ask the kids as we're performing and we're training, when are we done? And the kids have to answer, never. There is no end zone. There is no home plate. You are never done. So as a teacher, when are you done, CJ? I'm sorry, never. I, yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm sorry if that depresses people, but I also hope it excites people. Yeah. That the job is never boring because we're always trying to figure out the next step. And that's why I love being a teacher. How did you get your students to buy in? So even if like... So I, I hear you and I, and I tell kids all the time, like, this is exactly why we're learning this today. Here's, here's what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. I'm not giving you anything just because it was like at the end of the story in the textbook. 
Um, I am lucky enough to be able to pick all of the novels that I read in my literature class every year. Me too. Uh, I teach ninth, ninth and 10th grade literature, so I get to pick whatever I want. And, but it's uh, the buy-in, it takes a significant, it takes longer than I ever would like it to do. But typically right. I, I win for most, for the most part. Right. What is your secret or what was your secret back in, in that 10 to 12 year range? Well, the How did you get hit the buy-in? Well, let me start with a mistake I made. Okay, I'm sorry I'm talking so much about failure, but I think it's an important topic. Um, the biggest mistake I made early on on the buy-in is I was a hard seller. You should stay after school and do Shakespeare. It's good for you. Believe me, I'm older than you. You need to do this. And if you do that, you'll get kids staying, but they're staying for you. And that's not good teaching. It isn't. It's what in my class when we call the third level of moral development, when you do things to please people. Yeah. Um, uh, if you ask my kids today, believe me, they don't give a crap of pleasing me. <laughs> and that's a good thing. So what I figured out was the soft sell. The soft sell. I tell kids, look, if you don't want to, don't, don't do it. It's fine. All I'm doing is offering you. If I offer you a cookie or a glass of milk and you say no thank you, it doesn't hurt my feelings. If you don't want to join the Shakespeare play, if you don't want to come to this, it's fine. But here's the deal. If I'm going to get you violin lessons, if I'm going to buy you a violin, which I do, and I buy expensive violins for my students, and I have a top teacher who works for them, then your part of the bargain is you're going to work hard. You're going to work diligent. You're going to practice all the time, and you're going to sacrifice. Now, if you don't want to do that, and here's the point, it's fine. So what happened was, in the early years, very few kids bought in. I mean, the original group of Hobart experience was five kids. You know, I wow. was talking to kids, I was telling the kids, hey, let's stay after school and learn Shakespeare. And the kids were like, are you effing kidding us? Yeah, yeah. Like, F you. I mean, no way. But what happened was those five kids did really well. And they were having a lot of fun. They were talking about it all the time. And five kids became eight kids. And eight kids became 12 kids. And then there were days literally where if you open the door of my classroom, kids fell out the door because it was so crowded. But it did take a long time. And I, I would suggest in this fast food society, don't forget the basic motto of my classroom is there are no shortcuts. I don't believe in instant success or instant mashed potatoes. You know, lose 20 pounds in, in one week, you know, if you read this book. No, you won't do that. And you don't become a great teacher. In I, I wrote in my last book, no one is a great teacher in their second year. You might be a great second year teacher. Yeah. But you're not a great teacher. And, you know, if people want to disagree, that's fine. But the really good teachers around the world that I've seen, I mean, the people where you just go, wow, that guy's changing lives. They're always really old pros who are very yeah. patient, very patient, uh, and, and willing to let kids make some bad decisions sometimes. Uh, I've had kids not join things. And then they come back a few weeks later, listen, is it too late for me to join this? No, come on in. But then it's their decision. And that's yeah. why the kids who buy in, they're really buying it. It's their decision. It has to be. All right, this guy is brilliant. The whole time I was having that conversation, like I couldn't believe it. Like I was like, dude, this is like my hero. And I'm like really talking to him. If you go into my Amazon store, which is below, uh, I do make like three pennies off of every purchase. So, you know, just so you know, I'm, I'm on the take on this. But if you go into my Amazon store below, it's linked below this video. You can find all of Rafe's books in there. And I swear they are like, teaching books by someone who's actually been in the game for a long time not someone that taught for five seconds and then wrote a book about it he's like a true master of what he's doing and i don't throw that word around much i mean there's master yoda and there's pretty much rape Esquith. and that's it everybody hope the rest of your week is great peace